I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had the experience of, you know, cruising down the freeway with the windows open, not really paying attention to how fast they're going, and BAM! Flashing lights in the rearview mirror, and five minutes later, you're holding your very own free ticket to traffic court and a larger insurance bill. If only you'd been using a radar detector, a venerable piece of technology that speed demons everywhere have been using for years to avoid such unpleasant surprises. But first, a little bit about how radar works. Police commonly use what's called Doppler radar to track how fast passing cars are going. And although Doppler radar is usually associated with weather reporting, the way it works makes it a pretty versatile tool. A standard police radar works by firing a radar radio signal at nearby traffic which hits whichever car is being tracked and returns to the radar gun for analysis. The fact that the car is moving means that the return signal will have a different frequency from the original. This is called the Doppler effect and is the same reason that an ambulance siren sounds lower in pitch when it's speeding away from you. This difference in frequency is converted to a speed readout that the officer can see to determine if you are exceeding the speed limit. Doppler radar's simplicity has made it the tool of choice for traffic cops the world over for many years, so consumer grade radar detectors work then by detecting frequencies in the Doppler bands. Since the radar signals are really just radio waves, radar detectors operate a lot like the radio in your car that you use to listen to music. They're just tuned to Doppler frequencies which are much higher than AM and FM frequencies. So then whenever your radar detector picks up a Doppler signal, it will alert you in some way so that you can slow down before you get slapped with a ticket. Of course though, radar detectors aren't perfect and things like adaptive radar cruise control on newer cars and even those automatic doors that you see at the supermarket use frequencies in the Doppler range, meaning that false alarms are often a fact of life for people that use radar detectors. But aside from false alarms hampering effectiveness, police know how popular radar detectors are, so many police departments are now using LiDAR, which uses a more focused beam of in infrared light as opposed to Doppler radar which tends to scatter making it easier to pick up. LiDAR detectors exist as well but since police point LiDAR guns at one smaller spot on a car, often the license plate, the detectors tend to be a lot less effective. But hold on a second, I mean, what if instead of just detecting a police radar, you could actually keep it from tracking your car? Well, some more sophisticated radar detectors have a jamming feature that emits extra signals to confuse police radar and LiDAR. But not surprisingly, these are illegal in many places since the cops don't exactly appreciate it when you actively interfere with their equipment. Regular detectors, however, are allowed in quite a few places, including all but one U.S. state, a few provinces in Western Canada, New Zealand, and some countries in Europe. Just make sure you know what the laws are in your area before you buy so you don't get smacked down with a hammer of irony because the device that you bought to avoid a traffic ticket just earned you a traffic ticket. Or, of course, I mean, we could all just slow down and, uh, you know, kumbaya and all that stuff. However, if my experience rolling around out there in rush hour is any indication, I think we'd have a better chance of seeing Ford try and sell the Flintstone mobile. Speaking of trying to sell, I'm going to try and sell you guys on Audible.com. Audible.com is the leading provider of audiobooks with more than 180,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals. Audiobooks are a great way to catch up on your reading when you're doing, you know, mundane things like, oh, I don't know, being stuck in traffic, for example, when you're on the subway or the bus or you're just doing chores around the house or at the gym. Uh, personally, I find them a great thing to listen to as I'm falling asleep at night. So uh, yeah, there's one that they don't usually have me throw into the recommended uses for audiobooks, but I think they're just fantastic for that. And for our audience members, Audible is offering a free 30-day trial. Just go over to audible.com slash techquickie, linked in the video description, and browse the over 180,000 audiobooks. They've got all kinds of stuff, including 
The Martian, which just picked up an Academy Award very, very recently. So if you're thinking to yourself, gee, I always heard the book is better, but uh, I don't have time to sit down and read it, check it out. Because if you sign up for the free trial, you actually get your first audiobook, in the case of The Martian, by Andy Weir. We're talking like a $30 value for nothing as a welcome gift. So that's audible.com slash techwiki. Head over there and try it out today. So thanks for watching this episode of Fast As Possible. If you liked it, like it. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you want to check out our other channels, then you can definitely check them out. Linus Tech Tips and channels super fun. Leave a comment in the video description if you have in the leave a comment under the video if you have suggestions for future videos. And don't forget, as always, to subscribe and follow and all that good stuff. See you next time.